The C.J. Alexander buck, we've all heard about it, right, in this ongoing saga. And there's a lot of stuff out there about it, uh, articles, videos. And so I want to get beyond kind of the drama of it and the, the saga that's there. And we obviously all kind of want to know oh, what's going to happen here. But really getting down to the actual law that is involved in this, what's really going on there. And I reached out the, to the Ohio DNR and talked to them about this. So I have new information regarding that. And really looking at this from that perspective and how this case is being handled, how this really affects Ohio hunters, but also hunters everywhere and why this is so important. Okay, if you don't know the background, just real quick, uh, CJ Alexander in Ohio shot this potential record buck on November 9th and it went all over the place on podcasts and stuff and thinking about it could be the new record or real close to that you know world record and on December I think 26th it got confiscated by the Ohio DNR and that's the date that they put out there they put out a public notice about the confiscation and investigation and up to this point there's really been no more information but with this, you need to understand the law behind it and what's really going on here. Um, it's about a permission slip. This is all about a permission slip. And in Ohio, you need a permission slip to hunt or retrieve animals on somebody else's property. It needs to be signed by the landowner and you need to have that with you. Now, supposedly that's what this is about. Supposedly he shot it on his sister's property. That's what he claims and this is all surrounding that law so first let's look at the law and see what the law actually says i think it's important to actually understand the law at play here to kind of uh get anything out of this so the law has three parts and i'm going to read two of the parts part a says no person shall hunt or trap upon any lands pond lake or private waters without obtaining written permission from the owner or the owner's authorized agent part b is about landowner liability so they're they don't get in trouble if you did something on their land part c says a person who obtains permission is required to carry the permission at all times which the person is engaged in an activity for which the permission is required and shall exhibit it upon request of a wildlife officer constable sheriff etc etc now a layman's interpretation most people when i read this when other people read this would probably look at that and say okay you've got to have that permission slip when you're on the property right and a dnr officer could ask for it when you're on the property that's kind of what the law reads like and again i'll just say this i am not giving any legal advice i'm not a lawyer but I'm just reading it from this perspective, right? And then I talk to the DNR about this, and I'll re reveal what they say here in a second. But that's, that's kind of how it's worded. So that raises a few questions to really think about. In the case of the C.J. Alexander buck, if he shot it on November 9th and it was confiscated around December 26th, that's a long amount of time. It would appear then that they did not ask for this permission slip of where he took it or potentially allegedly took it when he was there or when he was retrieving it that's a long time that's about a month and a half after he allegedly took this buck and so there's a huge lag of time here that doesn't seem to jive with what that law says at least from a layman's perspective right also who can actually tip off the dnr can anyone give a tip to the dnr that could lead to confiscation of game and then an investigation which in this case was the order what is reason enough for a tip to justify confiscation and investigation could another jealous hunter make a claim that action would be taken upon and we all know in these cases especially with big deer that jealousy of other people is a huge factor it just is and could this signed permission slip be requested by the dnr at any place or time after game is taken even years later and the hunter be expected to produce it what is the time limit on this thing because again it took them a month and a half to even ask for it now there's even one more concern that comes up 
and no one's really brought this up, but there's money involved. I don't care what you say. Anytime money is involved, that is an incentive. In this case, the DNR will get a decent uh, fine for confiscating this rack if it was indeed taken illegally. And don't quote me on this, but I heard between thirty and forty thousand dollars because it depends on the inches. Also, there's an incentive for people to report things like this. Uh, someone would report it, and they could get money if there's a conviction. So there seems to be this money incentive system set up, intentional or not. Is this unfairly stacked against anyone who takes a trophy animal? So. I talked to the Ohio DNR. I talked to a guy named Brian Banbury, executive administrator of information and education about all this stuff. We talked about the law. We didn't talk about the C.J. Alexander Buck case, but he knew why I was asking this stuff. This is what he said. He said there is a legal gray area there. When it comes to permission slips, it reads like, oh, they have to be in the act of taking game or hunting he said that's not true they can ask for this permission slip at any point in time i tried to press him on how much time should i hold on to these permission slips if i'm in ohio and he really wouldn't tell me i didn't get that out of him it could be any point in time afterward so that is again admittedly a legal gray area and he said the dnr um, has to look at the totality or does look at the totality of the circumstance as they apply the law. So there's a lot of maneuverability uh, there, so to say, within the law for them. He also said there has to be good reason for them to do this and that the landowner has to be the one to actually file the complaint to the DNR. So a jealous hunter couldn't do it. However, he did say this emphatically, that someone, a third party, could tell the landowner something and then the landowner could do that. So a jealous hunter potentially, yeah, could say something to a landowner and get the landowner to potentially say something to the DNR. And if they thought there was enough evidence surrounding it, they could take action on that. He also said the reward system is not run by the state. It's another system. It's a private entity. You know, this reward system is based on how much risk, I guess, the whistleblower was put in for that. So that's kind of what's really behind the law and I guess the wiggle room that is there. Again, there's some gray area for interpretation of that law. Okay, like this episode so far? If you do, I invite you to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other deer hunting videos. And we also have a podcast where we really dig into uh, what it takes to be a greater deer hunter. So if you're a serious deer hunter, I invite you to check that out as well. Okay, and now back to the CJ Alexander case. All right, so what does this actually mean uh, for Ohio hunters and hunters in general? And again, I'm not a lawyer giving legal advice, but these are just some thoughts on it now that you actually look at the law. Again, there's a lot of legal gray area there. And there's several tiers of people that this can go through. A whistleblower that may or may not uh, have right intentions, might be a jealous other hunter, a landowner that you'd hope would be on your side, but you don't know. And then that to the DNR for their interpretation. So there's multiple people involved here so the big takeaway for ohio hunters and people in states like it is get those permission slips signed and hold on to them because according to brian they could ask for them at any point in time it could be 10 years down the road they could ask for these if they have enough information or evidence of something right so really get those permission slips and hang on to them and as it is now, would anybody really want to shoot a record book buck? I mean, with all of this, this seems to be stacked up against a hunter that shoots a really big buck. And on top of that, you put social media and the gossip firestorms that get started on uh, a lot of jealousy, if we're just honest, that's out there. And the guilty until proven innocent mentality, would anybody really want to put themselves in that situation where they could get prosecuted even if they did something very legally. It just seems like 
things are set up kind of against that now. It's really, I think, become an issue and a conversation we need to start having as to how to uh, remediate that and really protect hunters that are hunting legally uh, who happen to shoot a big buck. I'm curious also to know your thoughts on that. Leave them below. And thanks for listening. If you liked it, go ahead and hit subscribe and like. And I'll see you on the next Deer IQ video. Mm -hmm.